Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our first Sunday worship service of the new year of 2024. So happy new year. We love to be together in our Father's house, gathered to worship. So let's all stand. This is the call to worship, Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies. And so we will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all our hearts. And we will tell of your wonderful deeds. We will be glad and rejoice in you. And we will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. Heavenly Father, we come before you. For you indeed are sovereign. You deserve every ounce of our praise and our thanksgiving to you lord as we start off this new year god we know that we start with you god father we pray lord that this may be a year where we would go even deeper lord into intimacy with you god that we would run even a little bit farther lord god in our relationship with you god and that we would enter into that place lord of just encountering and just a sweet intimacy with you, Lord. So Father, we worship you today. We are thankful for all that you have done in 2023. We are excited for what you will do in 2024. Lord, may you be praised today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's confess our faith as we always do. The Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
So, Father God, we do come before you this first Sunday of 2024, declaring that you are the one that we long for, that you are worthy of all of our worship, all of our lives just laid before you as a living sacrifice, that it's our prayer, Father the God, that our lives are a prayer, Lord Jesus, that as we walk out the commands that you've given us, it's that out of that love for you, Father God, that we do all things unto the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we just pray today, as First uh, Chronicles 16 says, ascribe to the Lord all you families of the nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name and bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness and tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established and it cannot be moved. 
And so, Father God, we declare your kingdom is coming, Father God. Your kingdom is here. It's in your people, Lord Jesus, that we, the body of Christ, Father God, would rise up, Lord Jesus, that we honor you in this place. We want to be a people that are worthy of hosting your presence, Lord Jesus that it is through your stripes we were healed, Father God. It's through Jesus' sacrifice and atonement that has been completely done, and there is victory and restoration already won for us. And so, Father God, we come today saying we invite you into our lives, into our families, into this place, Lord Jesus, where we get to be invited into your presence, Lord Jesus. And it's that very place we long to dwell, Father. And so, Lord Jesus, today as we enter this first Sunday worshiping you, may our lives be a worship unto the name of Jesus, who has earned the name above every name. And we declare Jesus is welcome here today. We declare that you are the one and only God and that in 2024, that our sails will be set to the right north, to the correct north, the direction which is into your hearts, Lord Jesus, into you, Father God. And may we seek your face on this side of eternity so that we would be a pleasing, comforting aroma to your very spirit, Lord God and that our sacrifice of our lives would be pure joy and delight. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you, and we honor you in this place, and we say, may your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, good afternoon, folks. Today is the first Sunday that we are worshiping together as House of Prayer for Everyone. Take time now to say hello to those who are sitting around you. Turn around and look at the back and say hi to those people as well. Hello, Chosen. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Ian. Happy New Year. Great to see everyone. Hello, kids. Hope kids out there. All right, welcome, welcome. Our first Sunday together. All right, we have a few new announcements. First of all, we always have, oh, I have to click. We always have our uh, annual leaders advance. Uh, it's an annual leaders retreat, but instead of retreating, we're advancing, so we call it an annual leaders advance. Um, it is here at the Gathering Place, and it's a one-day event on Saturday, January 20th, all day. It is for all the elders, deacons, ministry leaders, shepherds, and their spouses. It also, I just want to say, is open to those who maybe don't fit into any of those categories, but really would like to come. We're okay with that. Come talk to me. Um, but it is pretty mandatory if you fall into the category of elder, uh, deacon, ministry leader, or shepherd, and spouses. We highly encourage you to come. Um, child care is provided. Uh, food is provided. We've got our speaker this year is Pastor Josh Madrinsky, and he is coming uh, up from Richmond, Virginia. He's a pastor, senior pastor of a fellow eco church. Pastor Josh Madrinsky will be the guest speaker. We've got seminars lined up as well. Uh, it's going to be a really, really um, a good uh, empowering time. So um, all leaders, and again, if you don't fall into that category but would like to come, it's just a one-day thing, come talk to me. All right, so that's the annual leaders advance. Also, um, that weekend, so Saturday, this is happening, and that Sunday, we're having our ordination and installation service, and that is for the people who have been newly elected to be elders and deacons starting this year to serve a three-year term. So if you remember, we have two elders, one being ordained, both being installed, um, and then we've got four, or was it five? 
five deacons who are being ordained and installed. So that's happening on Sunday, January 21st. It's part of our regular Sunday service. And the guest speaker for that day is Pastor Carlos Reyes. We had such an amazing time with Pastor Carlos during PPP. I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna have to be honest. If y'all missed Friday, y'all missed out a lot. <laughs> It was so, so, so good with Pastor Carlos on Friday, and so we've invited him to come back, and he will be speaking for the ordination installation service on Sunday, January 21st. So mark that on your calendars, you all. Um, this announcement um, has several parts to it. Um, you know, every month we highlight a different missions partners. For the month of January, we are not highlighting a particular partner, but instead we would like you all to press in and pray for all of our partners that are up there. So how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got ten official mission partners. This is all up on our website as well. If you've never gone to our website, you really should. Lots of information there. But these are our ten missions partners. Um, and we want you to just kind of uh, uh, pray over a, a covering for provision for their ministry, for their families, as they uh, continue to serve in their various places around the world for 2024. Um, and we are not having our... Um, missions partners HOP so normally on the second Wednesday of each month we have our uh, hour of prayer highlighting a specific missions partners and so because we just finished PPP we will not be having HOP this week instead we will have an HOP next week so next Wednesday on the 17th, and we'll send you guys out an email so you'll remember this, but January 17th, next Wednesday is a regular HOP using Zoom. So y'all can hop on and we will have a prayer meeting. It's not a mission highlighted um, HOP, but regular prayer. And also at the end of this month, normally we have a ministry night HOP. We will not. So no ministry night HOP since we've got so much happening this month. Is that clear? So next Wednesday is our only hour of prayer for this month. So join us on Zoom. All right. Um, as we told you before, there's a coffee house. Um, it's a heads up for y'all, save the date. Um, and it didn't happen last year, but it's still moving forward. So it'll be in February, February 24th. It'll start at four o'clock downstairs in the Potomac room. There'll be activities for kids. There'll be, it's a trivia night. And I found out that it is not just Bible trivia. So you guys, you know, it's not just Bible trivia, but it's like 80s trivia from 1980s information. It's just a lot of stuff. So trivia night, um, there will be prizes, as I said, um, kids activities for them, but it's a really good time as an outreach. It's for y'all to bring in and invite maybe your VIPs from your house churches, your neighbors, your extended family to just come and have fun, play games. Maybe some of your uh, coworkers or neighbors are really good at random trivia information. They can come and have a really good time with us. So mark your calendars for that date. Um, is there an announcement? Yes. Amy? Okay. It could be long. It's okay. For the parents and guardians who are sending their kids down for Hope Kids later, we just finished fix the printer, so please go ahead and continue to print these name tags. Thank you. Hey, did y'all understand that? Yes? Okay. All right. Um, at this time, we will continue to worship through giving. <clears throat> continue to use the uh, Church Center app, or we've got a QR code up there. I, I heard that if you aim your phone and camera at it, that it works. And of course, we also have our offering basket up here. Thank you, Trevor.
Lord, we thank you, God, as we come before you. Father, that we may be good stewards, Lord, as we enter into 2024 and all that you have for us, God. Father, we come with hearts full, Lord, Father, of love for you and worship of you, Lord. We thank you so much. We lift up, Father, all our missions partners around the world, God, all 10 of them. And we ask, God, that your provisions would be uh, upon them, Lord, that there will be a shalom and a health Lord, just the blessing of good health for them and their children and their families, God, as they continue to minister and to labor and to work and to serve in the various places that you have called them to, God, that you will strengthen them, Lord, and that you will bless them in the work that they are doing, God, as we lift them up to you. Father, we pray for those who are sick among us, Lord. We pray, Father, again, Lord, we say no to illness, sickness, and disease, God. We ask for quick healing and relief to come, Lord, for those who are suffering, um, Lord, from various illnesses and allergies, God, that are disrupting their physical health, Lord. So, Father, we come against it, and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would provide shalom in their physical bodies, God, as well. Lord, we just are so excited to see what you have for us in 2024, and we give all glory and honor to you. We thank you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, Hope Kids, you are dismissed. God is good. Just wanted to check. Is there anybody here who's go by Tom? Anyone? For whatever the shape or form you are, Tom. Anybody? There's a some insight, uh, not joke, but uh, something that I've been thinking about, praying about. No Tom here? No Tom here, okay. This is the first Sunday of the year, and uh, um, I, wanna, I want us to do something a little different. Can you all stand for the reading of the Word? We want to read the Word of God. In a responsive way. The word I believe God is giving us this year is, one of them is Psalm 24. I'll read the first uh, verse, and if you can respond by reading the next slide. The earth is the Lord's and fullness thereof, and the world and those who dwell therein. Let's do it in sync, in a sync, okay? All right. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? <coughs> he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Unwisela. Sela is not a word you should read. It means pause. It can mean it can means make the sound louder. It can mean like a forever, but it really like an instrumental or instruments instrumental phrase in there. So do not, do not have to read Sela. Often your Bible will say in a little bracket say with the Sela in, in the middle, okay? All right. Verse 7. Lift up your heads, O God gates. And be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Amen. You may be seated. I didn't know until I was doing some preparations and research that Psalm 24 is a psalm for Sunday. I didn't know that, did you? There are different psalms for different days, that, and, and, uh, and, and Jewish people will, uh, uh, will 
meditate on and, and declare Psalm 24 is the psalm for the Sunday. You didn't know that, did you? I didn't know that either. Let me, let me pray. Father, we come before you right now. I hear you say as the, new, as the year begins, God, who will ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Who will abide in his tent? Who will dwell in his holy place, holy sanctuary? Come today, God, and we look to you, our God and our King. But I ask you to speak to our hearts and minds. Open up heavens and show us your grace and mercy. We do love you, God. We do ask for brevity, for clarity. We ask for your grace that manifests in our lives. We pray your love, your life being poured out upon us even today. We honor you, God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God is good. You know, I don't know what this is the first week. This was the first week of the year, this is a, today is the first Sunday of the year, what did you do? What was the first thing you did this year? What is the first thing you have done this year? Let me ask. What is the first thing you are seeking this year? Did you, and some of you, if you're Korean, did you have some tteokguk? In the, in the first day of the year, you, you know, we, we Koreans say you have to have a bowl of tteokguk to be, to have a, you have one more year added to your, added to your age. I remember when I was a little, I want to, I want to get older quickly as I want to have many, many bowls on the New Year's Day. Anyhow, what did you do first thing this year? What is the first thing you are seeking this year? And I didn't know this, and, and, and as, as God really, as, as meditate waiting upon God for the word for the year, Psalm 24 was what God was resounding in my heart. As I, as I prepare this, to look at the word of God, I, I didn't know this. You, know, you cannot, your Bible often do not tell you this thing, but Psalm 24 is often, many scholars believe it is written at the time when King David brought in the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. This psalm, if you look at it very carefully, it makes sense. You, you, you know the story when, when young David, when he was a little boy, a prophet, a Samuel, comes to the town, and God was replacing a new leader, and God comes and, and finds this young boy who his family didn't consider anything important and chose him to be the king of Israel. And now he grows up to become the king of Israel and went through many years of difficulty. When he becomes a king of all the tribes of Israel, he settled into the city of Zion, Jerusalem, as a capital city. One of the first things he did was to bring the Ark of the Covenant into the city. But the king before, the king Saul, which was the first king of Israel, never saw the Ark of the Covenant. But David did. Now, I don't know. Let me, remind, let me remind you what the Ark of the Covenant is. Some of you are older, maybe have seen the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark. They may, they may tell you how old you are, but you know, the Ark of the Covenant is a really small box, yay wide, and about yay, yay long, and about yay tall, you know, and covered with gold. It has a little wings on the side, and they'll put a long poles to carry it. They had a cover called mercy seat with the angels, two seraphims stretching out the ends and covering, and they called the top mercy seat. It was a small box, but it was the most important box for Israelites. But this is what really symbolizes the presence of God. When Israelites in, in, the, in, in the wilderness, God gave them a uh, uh, instruction to build a tabernacle, place where God will meet with them in the holiest place called Holy of Holies. They would have only one little furniture, Ark of the Covenant. 
in the covenant was three things. There was a golden jar of manna. They had a manna which in a 40 years when they were in wilderness, God gave Israelites food, sustenance, manna from heaven, and they are manna in a jar in the in that in that uh, ark of the covenant. And then there were tablets of stones, the ten covenant, ten commandments in it, and the Aaron staff. Is a staff which God used in the hand of Aaron to open the Red Sea and all that, and that this is a stick where the staff where it budded. The stab by God's grace, miracle, something life came, life came out, it budded. That step was in the Ark of the Covenant, symbolizing three things God gives. The provisions, manna, the tablets, the, the Ten Commandments, God's word and guidance, and also the stab speaks of God's protection, God's leadership over your lives. In that place, so anyway, so this, the ark symbolized God's presence. When, he, when, when, when David became the king of Israel, first thing he wanted to do in, his, in, in the kingdom was bring that ark into the center of the city. The God will be in the center of the city. And this is the ark where, when, when they were in, in wilderness in the tabernacle, the, the Pillar of clouds will show up on top. A pillar of fire will be on top to show that God's presence was with them. That God was with them. Ark meant God's presence. So this psalm was really, uh, at the time that when David brought the ark into the city of Jerusalem, this psalm was written and maybe sang as a part of the thing. Look at what it says. Before I go on, just, just setting the context tells me something. First thing the king did as he began the king of the United Nation, United uh, Tribes of Israel, first thing he did was, I want God to be in, um, in my midst. I want God's presence to be in my midst. I want God to be the center of my life. As you knew it begins, what is the first thing are you doing? Are you seeking God's presence in your life? Are you seeking God to be center of your life? What are you seeking? So here it says, a very simple psalm, you know, and with three parts in it, verse 1 and 2 says, God is the sovereign. It says, the earth, the earth is the Lord. It belongs to the Lord. Earth is the Lord. And you know, one, of the, uh, one of the versions, uh, message version says, God claims earth and everything in it. God claims world and all who live in it. The all these are mine. He built it on ocean foundations, laid it out on the river girders. First thing, and says, the psalm says this, God, is, God owns everything. God is Lord of all things. This is the God who created heavens and the earth. This is our God. This is how it begins. And the second part of the psalm really says a very powerful question. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who may ascend? He says, sec, says same thing in a another different way, highlighting that who shall stand in his holy place? Who shall stand in his holy place? See, you know, you know it seems, saying similar thing in two different ways. The question is, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? When you, when you ask the question, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Our question is, our answer is, no one. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Who is worthy to go before God and stand before God? Who is? And the answer should be, no one. But here he says, the psalmist says here, in a verse 4, it says, he who has clean hands. Hands speaks about things we do in our lives. He has clean hands who have lived a, a righteous, holy life. 
and who has a pure heart, not only your actions, but your heart and motivations are clean and beautiful and right, who does not lift up his soul to what is falsehood, actually another version, like NIV says in this way, who does not trust in an idol. You have idol in your life. I'm not talking about K-pop idols, okay? It might be, but you know, some of you may need to repent. You know, but I, I, will, I will mention anyway. But uh, who does not trust in an idol or who does not lift up their soul to falsehood? And the next text it says, and who does not swear deceitfully, who does not deal deceitfully with others? It speaks of clean hands, pure hearts, and our soul not given to the things, the bad, bad things or things that shouldn't be trusted in and our relationship with others. If you look at every one of, any one of those, are you good in every one of those? Do I have a few clean hands? I don't know about you, my wife yells at me, wash your hands. Husband, you know what I'm talking about. Wash your hands. Figuratively, not only not just physically, but and pure heart. What Jesus said, those who are pure in heart will see God. Those who are pure in heart will see God. Who does not lift up their soul to what is deceitfully evil? Who does not deal falsely and with deceitfully with and, and with others? He said, Jew. And at the day, you know, if you look at the word, if, if you look at the whole Old Testament, the, the, the sacrifice, every one of those things were there so that they could come to God. Because they could not come to God because of the sin, they had to sacrifice to, for their sins to be forgiven. Because none of, nobody is righteous enough to come to God. Therefore, the old, the sacrificial system was given so that they can come to God. And the day, the whole point was, nobody can come to God on their own. Nobody can come. But look at Hebrews chapter 10. Could somebody find Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19? I didn't put the slides up there. So Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Can somebody find in your own Bible? You know, one of the best sounds is when I see people turning their Bible. We need to have an app that you know, when you turn the pages, it you know, makes a whew, turning sound, whatever. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Can somebody read? Go, go, to, go, go down, go more. Go next, next verse. Go to up to 24. Let's there. It says, since we have confidence to enter the holy place, what? By the blood. Of Jesus. Now we have confidence to come to God, not by what He had done, but by through Jesus Christ. For us in Christ Jesus, we have confidence to come to God. David thought he did. Remember when he got the when he got the plan to bring the Ark of the Covenant in when they, when he brought in first time. You know the thousands of people, about thirty thousand people gathered. They're celebrating and bring the ark in, and they brought it on a cart, put the ark on the cart because that's that's what they saw many years ago. That's how they carried it. While they're, while they're going, you know, you know the story how the you know very flat ground where the the cow would not ox, oxen would not stumble, oxen stumble, and the ark began to shake. One of the men, one of the priests, got and touched the thing so they steadied the ark and he zapped and dies by the fire of God right then and there. And the whole celebration stopped. 
And David got, was afraid. He couldn't take it any further. He put it in somebody's house for three months. You know, and in the three months, the Bible, Bible said that that house, Obedinim's house, was really, really got blessed. Everything he got blessed. Everything he got blessed. The grass was greener in there than outside, and all the, the animals having more milk, whatever. And, and, and but anyway, three months later, money. Three months later, David brings back the ark. He realized that he need to bring it, bring the ark in the right way. The priest has to carry it. There has to be, you have to bring in the God's presence, the ark, in a right way. So that's how he brought it in. And when, when he brought the ark in, they celebrated and they danced and they were excited about what God, has, God is doing in, our, in the midst. The, God, the ark was settled in the city, in the middle of the city. And when you look at this, it's in a psalm, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? You can actually, David saying, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? First time he didn't work. He, he didn't realize how to be done. Look at what it says in the next verse. It says, verse 5, he will receive blessing from the Lord because when you ascend to the hill of the Lord, when you stand in his presence, that he, the person who enters in, who ascends, who receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. There's a blessing in his presence. There's salvation in his presence. And, they, and then look at the next verse. The next verse is beautiful, verse 26, verse 6. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of God, God of Jacob. Let me stop right here. So here, the, uh, the first thing they did was to bringing the ark into the, into the city, he sought after the presence of God. More than anything that he desired, first thing he did in his, in his kingdom was that God to be the center of his nation. Not only God's rules, but not God's presence. He want God to be in the midst, in the middle of their lives. And, and the God, and he want God who called him and, and who blessed him, who strengthened him to be the center of his life. His presence, his sword after the presence of God. Let me stop right here. And that, that phrase, is, seek him, is a phrase that really, really made me think about one of the, one of the places in the Bible where somebody, a man of God, sought after God. In Exodus chapter 33, it was a very grim scene in that chapter 33. What happened was right before this, Moses went into the Mount of Sinai receiving God's covenant, Ten Commandments. He was there on the mountain for 40 days. Israelites are waiting on, on, the, on the bottom of the hill, bottom of the mountain, waiting for the man of God to come. And he, got, he was delayed, and people got anxious, and he made their own idol God, a golden calf, began to celebrate all that. You know, when, when Moses came down with the, with the Ten Commandments, the tablets, he saw them worshiping false gods. You know, and Moses was furious, and he realized they broke the God's covenant and threw down the Ten Commandments, the tablets broken, symbolizing that you have broken the covenant with God. And God says, God told Moses, you know what? I cannot go up with you guys. I cannot take you guys to the promised land. I will send angels instead of me. I will send angels to go take you to the promised land, but I will not go with you. Because if I go, I'm going to end up killing you because you're unholy. And, 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 and the people grieve because of what God said. And Moses in chapter 30 of Exodus told people to repent and wait until what God, what God will do. And chapter 33, verse 7 through 11, you can, you can skip down some passages. You'll find, um, uh, you'll find, and it says something amazing there. This is what I want to share a little bit about seeking the presence of God. Look what it says. It says here, 
the Moses used to take the tent and pitched it outside the camp, far off from the camp. And people were camped here, and he took a tent way outside the camp and pitched it, called it a tent of meeting, meeting place. Who is meeting? Not his girlfriend, not his wife. His meeting is what? God. It says, and he called it a tent of meeting, and everyone who sought the Lord, who seek God, who sought the Lord, would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise up, and they would stand at his tent door and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. See, the, the tent of the meeting was put way outside of the camp, saying that, 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 you know, that God is not going to be with them out there. So now look at verse 9. When Moses entered the tent, something happened. The pillow of cloud would descend. Let me stop here. I, mean, I, I feel I need to give a lot more background here. When God he took Israelites out of Egypt, when they were in the wilderness, God let them by. The day, there was a pillar of cloud, and the night, there was a pillar of fire. Pillar of cloud gave shades by the day. Pillar of fire by the night, he gave light as well as warmth. He symbolized God's presence. And he says here, when he, when he ran into the tent, pillar of cloud would come and, stand at the, and st stood at the entrance of the tent for everyone to see. The God said, I'm here. I'm meeting him here. And the Lord would speak with Moses. Think about that. God would speak to Moses. How glorious is that? Next verse. And when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the, at the tent, all the people rise up and worship God. Each at his tent. They're all watching. As Moses going to the tent, you see pillar of cloud standing, descending and standing by the, the tent of meeting out there, and they all stand. God is there. They're worshiping God. Look at verse 11. I love this verse. Thus the Lord will speak to Moses. Face to face. As a man speaks to his friend. You know, I'm a galaxy person. I am not in any way, what do you call, jealous of iPhone except one thing. FaceTime. My grandkids, my, my daughters all have face, you know, the iPhone. So that when my grandkids talk calls almost every day to my wife and they do FaceTime, I cannot do that with my phone. Galaxy. FaceTime. I want you to see something here. You will not see any place anywhere in the Bible, other than maybe here, maybe a few other places where God will speak to person face to face. God, not only God said, I know you, I talk to you face to face. See, this is what Moses, and, is, and next line it says, as a man speaks to his friend. God is saying, this is my friend. I talk to him face to face. I tell him things that nobody else knows. He's my friend. You see, Moses would pitch a tent to meet God and, and, and see, meet God and see God. See, that's what David wanted to do. As a king, what he wanted to do was, in his kingdom, in his city, the capital city, he wanted God to be in, in the middle and, he, and, and near him. He wanted to have a place where he will meet God. Meet God. 
When God will speak to you face to face, God will talk to you as a friend. Talk to you as a friend. And, and so, this is the invitation. And you know, this is a, bi a biblical invitation throughout the whole Bible. This is why the name of our Lord Jesus, the Son of God, is Emmanuel God who is with us. Holy Spirit came to live in us. He desires intimacy with us. He desires to be with us and like, like, speak to us face to face as a friend to a friend. That's God's desire. The question is, who will ascend the hill of the Lord? Who will stand in his holy place? Before, people couldn't do it. You know, on your own strength. Now in Christ Jesus, because what Christ has done, you are invited to come. And he'll talk to you face to face. He'll meet with you face to face and talk to you. That's what God is inviting us into. Who will ascend into the hill of the Lord? My final question is simply this. Where is your tent of meeting? Where do you meet God? Where do you see God face to face? Now let me give you some list of few things that I, I, I don't know if anybody will know the common denominator. Green room. Hope room. Green Siena. Atomic room. Does anybody know the common denominator in this thing? Anyone? I remember it was, I think, 2002, I believe, we began to have morning prayer in the green room, small green carpet room in FKPC. Just a place. And I feel like I wanted me to have a place where you just come and pray. Not a meeting for people, to, not a people to come, so I can just come before God and and not, not ask anything, God, I just want to see your face. There's a green room. The little spot where I will be sitting there, every there. And when we left FKPC 2010, we were worshiping at Rolling Terrace Elementary School. We have no place to worship except a Sunday in a school. You people know I had a green minivan, Sienna. And I, every morning I'll go by the school building, park on the side at 5.30, and I'll have a praise music on in my car, and I'll pray there. Some people who know they will join me in there, come and sit in there and pray with me. And an elder Anne used to come in before she go to work, and a few others will come and sit in there, you know, and we will pray together for two years. We have no place to pray. After that, 2012, we got a hope room on a root run right behind the Dunkin' Donut. We had a prayer room. We had 24-7 prayer. This was the days when you, when you used to have a, sometimes you used to have a every night marveling, prayer meeting every night, every morning. We used to have 24-7, we, we used to have a 24-hour prayer for three, four days, once a month. Time to, to seek God. When you moved up here, it was in the Potomac room downstairs. Every morning we sat down and prayed. Why? I'm not saying you should come to morning prayer. You could. Join, join me. We just needed a place where we would see God face to face. Where is your meeting, play, meeting place? Tent, where is your tent of meeting? I really believe God is inviting. His kingdom, when he began the year, he, when he began his kingdom, first thing he wanted to do was God to be the center of his kingdom. He want God's presence to be there. More than the, all the battles he need to win, more than all the things he need to run the, the nations with, he want God to be near him. He wants to know God's heart, what he says, what he, what he wants, and all that he wants to be with God. There was king, king's desire. Moses, when he's in the midst of difficult time in the nation, and what he did was he put a little tent away from the camp, little tent. He'd go in and sit down and pray. 
and God will come. God will talk to him face to face. This is what God is doing. I know a friend, he's also Bob, not Bob Hartley, Bob Frazier. He, and was, once he had, I think, for a couple of years, he was, he was the fastest growing company in the Midwest and whatnot. And he, in his company, he had a place of prayer in his, in his company. And, and in that prayer place, he will, God will actually give him algorithms. He will give him, what do you call, what do you call programming keys to write programs in that place. God will speak to him. God will show him things. God will come. Where is, where would your 10th meeting be? I believe God is inviting you in, God is inviting us into the tent of meeting. God's presence in his dwelling place. Whom may ascend the hill of the Lord? Because Psalm 27, verse 7 through 11 says, Open up the gates, open up the doors, that the King of glory may come in. The King of glory wants to come in to our lives. King of glory wants to come. Open up your heart, open up the gates. The king of glory may come in. How, how do we do that? We seek his presence. Seek his face. Can I praise him come? So where is, your, where is your tent of meeting? I'm not saying you can come and join me in the mornings, but you need to find a place where you see his face face to face. You need a place of meeting with God. As a husband... As a father, as a wife, as a businessman, a school teacher, wherever you are, whatever you are, whatever you see yourself as, even more than that, you need a place where God sees, meets you face to face. Who may, who will ascend the hill of the Lord? Who will ascend the hill of the Lord? who will not only enter, but who will stay and stand in his holy place. I believe God is saying, come up here. Come up. Ascend. Remember, said, to those who will give blessing, righteousness from God is salvation. Those are the promises, verse 6. God of Jacob, God transforms you, make Jacob into Israel. This is God's invitation for this year. Who will ascend the hill of the Lord? Who will ascend the hill of the Lord? We are able through Jesus Christ. Let's just stand.
from our God, our Lord. Can you hear me? Is it on? Okay. There's an invitation of, of, of our Lord, the greatest invitation to see you, to draw near, to friendship with God, intimate place with God. That's what the world for this year is about. Who will ascend the hill of the Lord? Who will stand in his holy hill? He's invited us in. Father, we come and we love you. We honor you, God. We come, Lord Jesus. He said, you did not choose me, but I chose and appointed you that you, that you may go and bear fruit. Food will abide. Whatever you ask of the Father in my name, He will give to you. No longer do you say, it, I call, no longer do I call you slaves, I call you friends. Slaves do not know what Master is doing, but I reveal everything to you. There's no greater love than this that, that you lay down your life for a friend. Lord, you are the friend. You lay down your life for us, God. We come today. Oh, we want to see your face with your face. Our God and King. Our Savior, glorious King. Mighty King, mighty God. We love you today. We honor you. God, we come. We want to see your face. We say we are yours. We delight in you. We glory God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. On the first Sunday of each month, we celebrate the communion, fellowship with, Holy, fellowship with our God. But we fellowship, communion with our God. And we celebrate communion by celebrating what Christ has done for us. And, we, and this is the first Sunday of the year. How wonderful we begin the year by celebrating what Christ has done for us. How he has invited us into him that we may be with, that we may be united with Christ. The Holy Spirit, we, be, we may be with God. That's what communion is. The night before Jesus going to the cross as a part of the Passover meal, he took the bread and broke it and gave it to them. He was making a new covenant with them. He said, this is my body broken for you. He knew exactly in just within 24 hours he will give up his life. He will die for in our place. He will become the bread of life. The Bible says, say may he took the cup. He was making a new covenant with them with his own blood. He says, take and drink. This is, this is my blood shed for you. For forgiveness of your sins, he was making a new covenant with his own blood. Not the blood of the animals, his own blood. He was making a new covenant with those who trust in him. New covenant with them. As he said, as often as you drink it, do this, you do this in remembrance of me, Apostle Paul remembers of the communion. Today, as I invite, as Invite, as I invite to come to communion remember what Christ has done for us but it's not only that it's also an invitation to draw near to Christ to draw near to his love and grace to see his grace into the place where he speaks to you face
Take your older children, come and sit next to your parents. Okay, sit next to your parents, okay? Let's pray. Father, we do love you. We thank you for your grace. Oh, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your sacrifice. Oh, we love you, Lord God. We worship you today. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your invitation to draw near and see you face to face. Our God. We love you, God. Be our voice. Be our strength. Be our friend. And be our nearness in all that all that we do. We love you, God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Brother, if you have taken it, let's take it together. Father, we thank you. One body. One cross. One Lord, one Savior. We love you, God, for your grace and mercy. We come confidently through, the, through our Lord Jesus Christ. The very throne room of our God, we draw near God. We love you, we give you glory, God. We honor you, God. Let this year be filled with your grace your nearness, your presence, God. We will see your face to face. Hear your voice. You walk with us. You go with us, God. Your kingdom come. You will be honored and glorified. We love you, God. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand. We sing final chorus together. the blessing the Adonai bless you and keep you Adonai make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and Adonai lift up his countenance on you and give you peace go and make disciples of all the nations Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I commanded you. Lord, I'm with you always to the ends of the earth. We love you, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen.